Welcome back to Special Reading reading Correct by me, Kedar the Tiger Rats. And today we are doing a short story, a Tristan short story. Uh, it does not have a title at this point. Um, I like to think of it as the danger of boredom, but title is still something that needs to be established. It is in the five the five thousand word range, so you may want a drink, a snack, or you know, find out where the pause button is. For those of you who are listening to uh, to this uh, live, oh right, and this is Ty. All right, let's get this going. His mood as about the shop wasn't good. Yeah, that, that's quick. Now, it was now weeks without a new weapon to study, without new ships designed to take apart, not even a security company announcing some new unbeatable system. Those were always fun, if too easy to beat. Security companies didn't think much of the people breaking into their the system. They think this. Hmm. Yeah, that's didn't have good opinions. Security companies didn't have good opinions of the people breaking into the system they used to protect their clients. They certainly didn't take into account how resourceful those truly determined were capable of being. They certainly didn't take into account how resourceful those truly determined were capable of being. The workshop was far from the town on purpose. He wanted to ensure that even if it grew, he wouldn't have to worry about the limits of a region where he lived. He liked the silence of the forest at the back of the building. It also added to the air of mystery he cultivated. There was nothing more noticeable than a completely normal person. The walk was long and he used the time to prepare himself for being among people. He did not care for people, but they were necessary. They were a necessity. He passed the occasional house. He wasn't the only one interested in being away from the town while remaining within easy reach of it, especially for those willing to fly their hover there. Hey, Tech! A man called from the, one of them. He was deep enough in thought, trying to come up with something he could do to stay occupied instead of his coming lunch, that it took him a few seconds to remember that he was Tech. He turned, ready with an excuse for the man standing on the porch of the house questioned his slow response. After all, Tech was often lost in thought. Mr. Armitage he greeted the man when he didn't add anything. Like everyone in town, or the entire planet, the man didn't react to how he to the way he looked. Any chance you can take a look at something for me? He took out his data pad from the pants pocket. They were the only thing he wore and consulted. Yeah, where did my cursor go? They were the only thing he wore. Actually, you know what? That's basically almost where we go. Oops. And consulted it. He didn't have to. He knew the time, he knew the diner would serve food all, all day, but he'd taken care that everyone noticed Tech was meticulous. Is it a big repair? Tech was always willing to help, but this was lunchtime, and he had gone to great lengths to ensure people realized that lunchtime and his schedule was important. I wish I know, the man replied, throwing his hand up in a well reversed gesture of defeat. Gesture of defeat. Janitors acting up. A grower, not a thinker. Smile. Everyone knew Tick was easygoing, and sometimes it looked to be taken advantage of. I can look at it and determine what's wrong. I know I could count on you. The man led him to the back of the house, where the shed containing the generator was located, along with farming equipment. The man was older, appearing to be in the, mid in the middle of his first century. But the white hair 
Oh, come on. The middle of his first century, but I want hair and wrinkles. Wrinkled face. But it was close to twice that. The farmer had provided the information, and he had been asked. Okay, and Tech had been asked. Tech wasn't one to inquire about the people around him. His questions were always related to what, what he did with Harry. He found out the man's age along with many other things by doing his research. The man had abandoned a wife and after emptying their account. He'd lost all that money gambling and had found himself forced to work as a drug courier in an attempt to repay the debt the debt the debts he had accumulated. But that was all that was a that hadn't gone well. In desperation he had faked his death in a in a ship yeah. See, I keep speeding up. That is as you know, that's why I don't do this professionally, but that is one of my problems. I need I need I need to be slower. Because then I start stumbling over my own words. The man had abandoned a wife after emptying their accounts. He'd lost all that money gambling and had found himself forced to work as a drug courier in an attempt to repay the debts he had accumulated. But that hadn't gone well. In desperation, he had faked his death in a ship mishap and come here to hide. As with just about everyone else in the little town of First Haven, this man had been in trouble. Arrived. Do you have any tools? He asked in the gentle tone Tech always used. Friendliness and embarrassment had nothing to compare. Sure, Aguala bought me some for our wedding. I pulled the box from the cabinet and dropped it at his feet. No idea why. It's not like I've ever gone done that before. He opened the box and revealed the very tool still sealed in the original packaging. He picked up an unsealer and studied the packaging for sign that. Resale. It hadn't. The man did not need such pretense or lies here, but to have it was in green deep. Never take anything for granted. He had crafted tech to be a trusting person, but he wasn't. He used a, cl a claw to cut it out of its packaging and wondered if the wife wondered what the wife would do if she found out what this man had done to his previous family. What if they found out he was he, he was alive? Where he was hiding. No, not only would that disrupt the tranquility, he ensured that this planet remained erratic, but he had nothing to gain by destroying this man's life, except for alleviating his boredom. He used the unsealer on the generator's access cover while the man talked. He wrinkled his muzzle at the smell and had escaped as he removed it. A capacitor was melting. The most likely cause was an improperly calibrated sensor. Most likely cause was a sensor. Well, let's see. It's the most likely cause was either that an improperly calibrated sensor had had been disrupted, or likely cause was an improperly calibrated sensor which I'm going to that, hadn't distributed the power evenly. It easily found the capacitor. Located the associate sensors, identified the likely suspect, and freed more tools from their packaging, used them to disconnect that power line from the rest of the generator, and stopped before he patched together enough for repair. Tech didn't do patch, patch a job. He only used the proper equipment and parts, even when he had, even when he needed to fabricate them himself. He could repair something with anything he had on him. It was also lunchtime, and you had already used more of that time than you should. Took the line out and resealed the generator. You're down 20% without that line, so be careful how much power you put you pull until I fixed it. I can get the part I need to do the repairs after everything, and I'll be back with it fully calibrated by the end of the day. You're a lifesaver, Tech, the man said. I don't know what I'd do what I would have done when, if you hadn't passed by. Died, he thought darkly when the generator exploded and turned his property into a crater. He didn't care about that part. People died all the time. Few people had the fortitude to withstand what the universe threw at them. It was the disruption to his life that annoyed him enough, considered snapping the mitt, considered snapping. Snapping the man's mitt. They were alone, too really simple to give the appearance of falling while trying to investigate why the generator was, the generator was misbehaving. But 
that would also cause disruptions. Yeah, he was too. He wasn't. He wasn't so bored yet. It could have been avoided if, as the man claimed, he did regular maintenance on the equipment. This type of damage took months to build up, and even a nose as dull as dull as a human's would have picked up on the scent. He could chastise him, make it clear that it was his responsibility to ensure the generator was in good working order. But that would be that would thread tread on the man's belief he was right. And while he had no problem shattering the man's illusion, Dick was not so inconsiderate. I'm just happy I caught it. You caught me in time. Remember, this design needs to be looked at every week to ensure its function it functions properly. Oh, I do. Every week, just like the manual said. I scan it and everything. That's good. One of those is only scanner in sight still sealed there. Had he crafted text so passive this man thought such a lie would go unnoticed? No. He simply counted on tech being too nervous to point it out. Maybe he needed to start making changes to tech. They would have to be small, gradual, but making him someone willing to punch an idiot or wasting his time would be worthwhile. No, it was a boredom talking. Tech needed to remain someone others wouldn't think too much of. Remember, keep any power demand low until I'm back. If you burn it out completely, it's going to be much harder to repair. A crater, a crater wasn't an easy fix. No worries, I'll make today one of rest. And if this was another lie, there would not be a need for Tech to stop by again. He placed the power line on the table as he sat then looked through the, the feeds on his data pad in, hope, in the hopes that something then looked through the data feeds on his data pad in the hope something had come up during his walk to the tavern. Still nothing. Even the private communication nodes he set up for the people he paid handsomely for the kind of information he needed were empty. He set the pad and screwed down on the table. How could it be? that in a place the size of the universe, no one had made one discovery, created one lock, one weapon, or made one change to a ship, should be impossible for research to simply stop producing like this. But every few objective decade, decade it was like everyone agreed to make his life miserable. Heck, Tavern's owner's wife placed a plate of steaming food before him, meats, vegetables, along with the usual glass of water, along with his usual glass of water. She smiled at him, moved her hand to his shoulder. I was afraid you wouldn't ha I wouldn't have the pleasure of your company today. Mr. Armitage needed me to look over this generator. It's misbehaving. He nodded to the line on the table, and didn't react to the touch, but didn't acknowledge it. Her husband, beyond the bar, has not reacted to her floating with him anymore. He had nothing to fear, after all, from someone who wasn't human. How could Tech know that the, that the touch indicated interest in him? That the thought that that the way her thumb rubbed through the fur meant she wanted to feel more of him against her. He could use his nose for one thing. Human sense made everything clear they didn't want to. Made many things clear they didn't want to express, such as her lust for him. It was why, after noticing the first time, he altered his running path so it would take him along the line separating their, the two properties, where she could watch him run naked. You know what? Naked from the kitchen window, and that her husband would do the same from the bedroom. Maybe he should take her the way she wanted him. He didn't care for women that way, but he could perform with them. And doing so here would cause interesting, interesting chaos. Would her husband... Would her husband's anger be caused by a sense of betrayal or jealous, jealous, yeah, or jealousy he had with her over him? Is that what it is? She asked, leaning forward, hands, hands sliding down his arm, but he, she was looking at him, not it, smiling. He did not acknowledge the invitation. The chaos it would cause would only would have long-term repercussions. He might have to leave this planet. And he was not ready to do so. He was still it was still a secure location, and he wouldn't jeopardize that simply because of boredom. I need to get a replacement capacitor and components to repair the sensor. I'll be working on it all day. 
you aren't reading a notice. She didn't move, and you got a full no a nose full of what she wanted. Humans reacted to such sin. Even when they weren't conscious, they were there. He didn't. Have you run out of material? She lowered her voice, her smile and turned inviting. I can lend you some of mine if you want. I can drop it off at your house. It's all right. Something will come. Not even any time now. It better. Without something to occupy his mind, his body was demanding more and more of his focus to keep to keep the need to act, keep something, anything under control. She straightened. Enjoy the food. There was no disappointment in her voice or scent of it. At, at his lack of response. How could she be disappointed when he never reacted? Never seemed to understand what she was after. I always do. The hand trailed on his arm as she walked away. He ate mechanically, making all the appropriate sound to indicate he enjoyed the meal while tasting none of it. He needed to find something to research before he started looking at each person in this town as a way to entertain himself. Once done, he headed to the bar to pay. He didn't have to, but the game with the owner was now. Part of who Tech was. So, what are you working on? Me? Now. So, what are you working on now? Tavern owner asked. Mr. Armitage needs me to repair this, this generator. He showed the defective line he carried. Often, his evasion was more overt, but today he had an excuse to misunderstand. I hear from a friend who has... Contacts that you work for SpaceGov. You do secret research. He gave the man the same enigmatic smile as an answer he had on previous attempts to get tech to admit what he did on this planet when he wasn't helping them with repairs. There was such a thing as someone being too loyal, so he had given tech a he had given tech a few traits that made him stand out, and in the process made him less noticeable. He ran along his property naked every morning, and he never answered questions about what he did and who he did it for. Come on, Tech, you have to give me a clue here. He smiled again. I'll see you tomorrow. The half of frustration from the tavern owner was more amusement. Frustration as he headed out for the as he headed for the exit. He stepped out of the way as the portmaster entered. It was the danger of being delayed. Crossing path with this man. Tech. The man greeted, studying him, studying him as he did any time they met. Jacoby? He answered the greeting, and the man continued to the bar. The portmaster was the only person who had the potential of causing him trouble. It was why he did what he could to avoid him in ways that didn't draw attention, such as ensuring they didn't eat at the same time. The portmaster had appointed himself as lawkeeper before he came here. Hmm. I'm I hear here the issue I have is that this he is vague. And I have to hope that the rest will carry over and imply. Because I can't do more. Like I cannot I cannot have it be before tech arrived because Tech is a creation, and I don't want to give Kirsten's name. And yeah, the portmaster had appointed himself as lawkeeper before he arrived and established and established tech as someone beneficial to the company. Too. Well, that wasn't. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't what could be problematic. The man had been a mercenary before settling here. Here. The only. The only one he had heard of who survived the life long enough to choose to retire. 
The knowledge the men gained while living the life was what would make him a, a problem should he ever come to, should they ever come to blows. Mercenaries had to be adaptable to survive, learn a variety of skill, be willing to do what others considered unthinkable. It made any who survived formidable opponents. Really testing just how formidable Jacoby was would help alleviate his growing boredom. But no, he would not fight in here, not in this town. He would not fight. He was gentle. He was a gentle soul. He built and repair. He exited the tavern and put his temptation as far as he could. Outside, the town center was, like his message nodes, empty. The afternoon's heat. The afternoon heat. Afternoon. Summer heat. The afternoon's summer heat kept most inside, where temperatures could be controlled. He didn't like heat either. His fur was for withstanding colder weather, not heat. But he learned to endure discomfort, so continued with his tower, with his established plan. At the store, he purchased a replacement capacitor, paying with a credit stick instead of having an account connected to the tank. That's going to be... Hmm. Uh, huh. Uh, oh, thing with a credit stick. Okay. Instead of okay, if I make it to different phrase, I need a instead of then. Okay, so then it can't. So then it has credit stick instead of having an account connected to the town. Yeah, okay, that, okay, no, I know. Instead of... Unlike... Everyone else... Come back here. Unlike everyone else... Ten did not have purchases. At the store, he purchased a replacement capacitor, paying with a credit stick. Unlike everyone else in the town, he did not have an account for his purchases. Not a detail. Felt this camouflage by being different from the norm. Outside again, he stopped at the sound of flesh hitting flesh. The slap came from the side of the store. He knew all the sounds that could be made from flesh, as well as the cries that accompanied them. He had caused enough for them. He had caused enough for them. Only those he had those he had been responsible for. Only uh, only those only those that he had been responsible for. Wait, what? Um. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know what. Okay. Except. Unlike, except, unlike those he had, except, unlike those he had been responsible for, this high pitch, high p, how, uh, except, unlike those he had been responsible for, this high pitch cry hadn't, hadn't been from an adult. Even women sounded different. Stepped around the building and stopped. The child's hand over the red wealth forming on his cheek. He knew him to be seven, but only because he had researched the family. 
Unlike a species, humans' children change too rapidly for him to be able to identify the age on sight. I swear, the accompanying man said, shaking the child by the other arm. If you ever embarrass me like that in front of them again, I'm going to hit you so hard you won't know. The man stopped and spun, finally registering he had an, they had an audience. The, man's mask, the man masked his anger badly and waved. The, ma the man masked his anger, anger badly and waved. The ring was momentarily visible. Enough, he made out the large face on the inside of the finger, explaining the mark on the child's cheek. Hey, Tech, how's it going? He pulled the child along as they approached. Don't mind us, it's just a human thing. Boys will have to be explained what respect is about, you know. His mask was perfect. The smile reaching his eyes as he nodded his understanding. He heard it's a human thing often. Anytime a human did something they didn't want to have to explain. Unfortunately, he had taught himself many things about humans since they were the most numerous species in the universe. What he had witnessed wasn't a human thing. It was a power thing. A thing he had been the recipient of at the hand of his father also. But his anger didn't show as he played at being tech, who didn't know enough about humans or violence to understand what he had witnessed. Boredom and anger and were forming plans as he watched them walk away, the child clinging to his abuser as if he was a protector. He had done the same. Children of any species didn't know enough to understand that simply because someone bore the title of father did not mean they were someone interested in protecting. He had learned that lesson the hard, the painful. But he had learned it. He did need did he need anything from his from his shop for what he planned? If so, could he justify getting them and not have the two linked? Did he ha did it have to be tonight? It did it didn't, the planner in him answered. Of course it had to, the one craving action said. Still had this established routine to go through before he could act. He would use that time to streamline his plan, acquire anything he didn't have in a way that wouldn't trace back to him. There were plenty of people in this town who would have had, who would have what he needed in the past to take the blame. Should the portmaster be a, a better investigator than he expected? The building stood away from the house, lacking her from the side where the vehicles entered and exited, and the field growing crops he used to mix all the alcohol the tavern sold in the back. The father was named Zephron Kalibar. The child, the son, one of six, was called Tobias. He had researched them when they, had, when they settled here, as he had everyone already there when he arrived or had come to here. Afterwards, all of them, of all of them, the Kalibar family was the only one who could not discover a reason for their presence here. As with any planet so far from the center of population of the universe. As with any planet so far from the center of the that would be plural, there's more than one. As with any planet so far from the centers of the of population in the universe, those who came to the town of First Haven came to escape. Only those born here and no reason to what hide why they, why this was where they chose to live. Zephron was better than most at hiding his reasons. He approached the building, walking through the tall plants, disturbing them no more than the night wind. He had no light, but the crescent of the one orbiting body reflecting sunlight was enough for him to see by. He set out at a run as the sun set. The two hours it took, he crossed the forest behind his house, ensuring it he Need to slow down. He set out at a run as the sun set. The two hours it took to cross the forest behind his house, ensuring that the darkness was near complete once he was on the other side. Humans needed light or enhancement to see on such a night. He would see the former before they saw him, and no one in the latter. No one here had the latter. Three hours later, when he Stood never? Uh, stood. That's, that should be next, I think. Next to his target. From there, from here, 
we saw movement in the house's window. The distance was enough. He couldn't make out who it was. Two of the children were nearly adults, the way humans counted the years, and the wife also looked at him. How likely was it Saffron limited himself to eating only one of the children? His father hadn't limited to only him. He wished this was one of the other planets, one with a, with a normal population, instead of the one Instead of, uh, he wished this was one of the other, okay, on A1. On one, with the normal population, instead of one town, and under 300 people planet-wide, he would be in the house, under using his anger on the father directly. There would be many ways to ensure nothing could get back from him in such a plan. And it would be the only it, it would be only one act of violence among millions. Here, it would be the only one since a drunken argument in the tavern eighty days ago. Such an act would cause the portmaster to go deep deep into everyone on the planet. Many things would come to light. Things people wouldn't want revealed. As unlikely as it was. Some of those things could be his. The building was locked, which spoke of a lack of trust. One, one this community didn't deserve, so built on the past. This one time, it was justified, but ineffective. He quickly bypassed the lock, then the alarm, and then, he, then, entered, and then entered the building. With the door closed, he took a light from a pouch slung over his shoulder. Storage building and no windows for light to enter or escape, but his light was still only strong enough to let him make out the shape of the vehicle, the vehicles in it. He made his way to the harvester. It was a Calamore. It was a Calamore a previous farmer had used and given saffron when the men talked of his plan for farming the land. The mother was old, but designed for unsettled world, places without expectation of replacement parts. It would be decades before this machine failed, if left alone. He increased the light enough and made out details and colors. He found the access panel, bypassed its lock, and inside connected his data pad to the central processor. As with any equipment that had a processor, it was designed to be automated. But the Zephron enjoyed boasting how he was here to return to the past and work still now. Part where, when, work still meant something. He approved of doing the do. Oh. He approved of doing his, uh, of doing with his own hands. He did most of his work that way. Tools were there to assist, not replace the work. Yeah, this, this, I can't think of a way around it, but this will, hopefully the tone will carry it. That, you know, that this is my narrator speaking, that he's not talking about Zephron. He also proved, because it ensured Zephron was seated on the harvester when, when the changes he made he was making to the processor would take effect. It took him time to force the processor to ignore reports from a specific sensor within the harvester. Even the simplest processor had a stubborn survival instinct, and the changes he would make would lead to its death, as well as that of Saffron. Once the processor was lo properly lobotomized, he set about making other the other modifications to those sensors. They were minor enough, only the most attentive engineer would notice them. And the only one on the planet with that level of attention to detail would be off-planet within days of the modifications being made. Done with the modifications, he verified that the processor had, didn't have the deviousness he had encountered before in some, then hid all traces of his access to it. All right, let's start this. Done with the modification, he verified that the processor didn't have the deviousness he had encountered before in some, and he had all traces of his access to it, and closed the panel. 
He locked it, then reset the alarm on exiting and locked the building. By the time the next harvest was done, none of Zephron's children would ever have to worry about being hit again. Any idea how long you'll be gone? The portmaster asked as he unlocked the hangar where his ship was kept. Two years, objective, no more. And it's work related. Yes. So just handing in reports, no new inventions? He kept his face impassive as the portmaster looked over his shoulder for a sign he'd get strike. You know Orphil is going to ask me what I found out. You're free to tell him. The portmaster raised an eyebrow. He direct. He was too impatient to. Impatience led to mistake. He finally found something to do, and now he simply wanted to get started. I can automate this when I come back. The portmaster chuckled. What else do I? What else do I have to do here? Finished entering the code and slid the door open. Even without tool, he could have gotten in half the time. He could have gotten in half the time. Even without tool, he could have gotten in. You know what? Gotten in half the time. I can't come in in half the time. Gives me a reason to see you off. You know you don't have to. He entered, quickly stepping out of the light. The open door allowed in. I still want to. His eyesight adjusted to the darkness and he headed for the closed ramp to of his ship. The closed ramp to his ship. The closed ramp of his ship. The light indicated increased as the portmaster continued pulling on the door. He ignored the keypad on the lock, removing the latches in a specific order, then took the cover off. Inside, the warriors were identical. He made the notification himself. These were too dependent on manufacturer's spec to, get, to gain access. This had a order as well as a distraction to the real intent of his modifications. He disconnected the needed wires and connected them to the proper, in the proper order. He closed the panel and the display blinked twice. He entered the disarm code, then the unlock one. Tech, the portmaster called as the ramp lowered silently. Be careful out there. Everyone here would miss you if you didn't return. I'm always careful, Jacoby. He stepped up on the ramp before it was fully down, then started closing the portmaster continuing instruction to be careful. instructions to be careful. He locked it and let out a breath. The tension finally he dropped the mask and the smile vanished. He was more comfortable with a neutral expression. The ease with which he decided on the course of action for dealing with Zephron had been the signal he needed something more involved to do. He spent the next days looking for the kind of job, kind of job Oops. What a kind of job that would be challenging enough to interest him while not getting him mirrored into an extended problem like the last time. Set about reconnecting the ship's power. He kept hoping for some research to arrive while he looked, but nothing had by the time he found a job on the mercenary boats. It was a retrieval job, the kind that no experienced Merc was interested in since returning stole of spot. The kind that no experienced Merc was interested in. Since retrieving probably only meant. Since we're retrieving a stone probably only required. Working out where it was, breaking in, taking it, and leaving. Easy credits were rarely of interest to Mercs, but all he wanted was for time to pass. Passing time meant that research would be done, inventions revealed. He could simply put himself under cryo and send his ship on a two-year trip. But what would he do if, once he woke up back here, there was still nothing? The job would take care of his need to do something, so he'd be able to wait should nothing be available when he returned. Against Merck procedures, he researched the man who posted the job. He shouldn't have been able to get the information for even that. Since or even that, since brokers wanted their cuts. But the universe was too determined in its desire to kill him, so he never took chances. Only once, only once he confirmed the man had no connection to anyone or 
any organization he had ever interacted with, did he take the job. The relay in place, the panel closed again, he powered up the ship. Scan the computer for any modification made since he had shut it down, and connected it to the ship. Should be impossible to access a, com a computer on a ship on it should be impossible to access a computer on a ship on a hard power down, but he had done it. But he had done it before. He retracted the LinkedIn view and eased the ship out of the hangar. On a screen, the portmaster waved at him. He ignored the move. He maneuvered the ship, the ship to the center space created by all the hangar. It was where the portmaster insisted the ship landed and took off from. The distance from the building kept the exhaust blast from prematurely damaging him. He blasted himself into the atmosphere with as much power as the engine could endure. And as the sky darkened to the blackness of space, he shed the last vesti vestige, vesti vestiges, vestige of the mass that was tech. Tristan set course for the little world by the name of Selinga. And this concludes the Tristan short. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when I'm post when I post other such stories, such read and correct as the chapters from other books, uh, subscribe and hit the bell. This story will be up somewhere eventually, I don't know where. In the meantime, you can find it on my Patreon. And uh, you can get the books in the series on all major e-retail. The information, the links will be in the notes. And with that, I wish you a good day.